from the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, located in the center of Foxborough, Massachusetts, you are watching Around Foxborough. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Around Foxborough. My name is Jared Craig. I'm your host this week, and I am so happy to be joined by three members of the Founders Day Committee. They're here to talk about Founders Day, the parade, the field events, the fireworks, the whole day all put together, and uh, what we need from you, what the day's going to look like, and, and how it's all going to come together. So uh, I'd like to officially welcome Carrie Rosado, Rita Giovino, and Monica Fizzler. So thank you three so much for being here. Um, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to know just from the three of you, what's your each of your favorite events of the day? Is there like a specific booth or something <laughs> that you like of the field? Well, I love the parade. You're the parade girl. I, but I love going to the field. Strawberry shortcake, I think, is my ultimate favorite. A classic. And so can yes. you tell people who might not know what Founders Day is, there's all the booths on the field and then one of them is like a fundraiser for... It is. Yeah. So I'm going to let Carrie speak to the yeah. field, being so, the field person. I'll, I'll stop. My favorite last year was the llamas selfie. Oh, So yes. that was kind of neat so um, having the llamas there and a lot of kids got to, you know, at least touch the llamas, get their picture and their big smiles on their faces. Right. Are they back this year? They are back this year. Um, and this year we're also having um, a cow for the cow chip, so the cow will be there so kids can come up and uh, I think we're also going to have a baby sheep there. So there'll be some animals cool. for the kids to kind of pat and touch. So Fantastic. be pretty good. But there will be a lot going on in the field. I don't know if I get into that now or... Yeah, let me hear from Rita first and then I'll come right back to you, Carrie, if that's all right. Rita, what's your favorite? Well, I like the strawberry shortcake and, <laughs> and I like the things at the field. And one year they had um, some of the high schools going around playing music all around the field, and I thought that was really neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Carrie, would you mind telling us a little bit about the event at the field? First is the parade, and then we move to the field? But First is the parade, and then people, as they filter down, come down to the field, and so it's basically when the parade ends around 11, everyone starts heading down, so the JCs and the Rotary have their burgers and hot dogs all fired up, ready to get those people some food in their belly. Um, and a lot of other um, organizations will be doing food as well. We've got lobster roll, um, fried potatoes, soda, Gatorade, water, cupcakes, fruit kebabs, strawberry shortcake, ice cream. Um, so quite a bit going on um, with all the organizations, which are all nonprofit organizations, because um, that's one of our stipulations. It's more their big fundraiser for the year. Um, and the people of the town really come out to support those organizations, which in turn support all the kids and um, people in the town. So it's kind of a a give and take, which is pretty neat. It really is such a community event. Yeah. Um, all of those things cost money, yes. right? You said they're fundraisers. Is it cash only? Is it um, a mixture? Preferably cash in, uh, or checks, okay. um, mainly because Wi-Fi on the field is almost non-existent, so trying to do charge and uh, Venmo is quite difficult for the organization. So they really would appreciate cash only or checks, um, but that really helps all the organizations out if, people come prepared. Throw a couple bucks in your pocket and head yep. down to the parade. That way too, you can always, what's left, put in the donation jar for next year's yeah, fireworks. Absolutely. And Monica, you had mentioned the parade. Can you talk yes. a little bit about that this year? What does it look like this year? And so it's, it's coming together. We started to line it up. I started lining it up last week. So we have, right now, there are about 20 participants. And again, we try and not turn anybody away. So somebody wants to, to join, they may not be in the spot they want, but we will get everybody into the parade. What are the tough spots to get? Like front of the line, so, back yeah, of the line? It's or? funny. <laughs> some want the back, the very end, and then some people say, can you put me towards the front? We try and work with the field, too. Some uh, of our participants may be headed to the field with their apparatus, I say, because mm. some of it's the, the fire department and then uh, Foxborough Lions Club, if they bring their iMobile, they like to be on the field, so we try and get them in the front of the parade so they can do it quickly. Gotcha. So the parade starts at 10 o'clock. Lineup will start at 9 o'clock in the morning over at 132 Central Street. So if we have any participants at home who are going to be in the parade, they have to be there by 9. They, we start lining up at 9. Start so at 9. they start closing the roads about 9.30. So we try and let everybody know, hey, the roads are going to close, so please be ready for that mm -hmm. and plan accordingly. So we'll, we'll be there early, but as people come in, we'll start lining them up. Okay. So it'll go down Central Street. Looking forward to it. A um, lot of participants, a lot of candy being passed out. Um, 
a lot of fun for everyone. Great. Have we, there any new participants this year? So we have a couple of things. Some of it we're just working out right now, but we, we did hear that um, Partners in Patriotism is coming back this year. So, yes. so we're in talks into what capacity they'll be there. Um, we have the Friends does, of Does that Federal mean usually Day. a player or two might make an appearance? A player or two right. will most likely make an appearance. Be we cool. have Pat Patriot and the cheerleaders coming. Nice. So uh, different things. Um, we have the mariachi band that was here. The, they made their debut last year. <laughs> yep. So they will be back this year. Right. As well as the Foxborough High Marching Band will be there. Nice. So we're looking forward to it. It, it, it should be a great, great day. Um, we did make some changes. So as far as the parade, we decided because a lot of people will choose to park either at, at the at town hall parking lot or at the, the charter school or behind some of the side streets off of... Um, Oh, Leonard Street. Oh, sure. So because of that, we are stopping the parade at Carpenter Street and having them turn down. So they'll go on to South Street, but instead of going all the way down to Union where Booth Field is, yes. it's going to stop one street. Right before the I Correct. School. Right before the I Okay. That way it's easy access for any of the participants and for parents who have littles who are walking in the parade who might be like, I do. I, you're, <laughs> you're gonna drop my, my baby off at Booth and where are they gonna go and how are they gonna know where to get there? So we decided that Carpenter Street would be the best. Oh, that's, I like that option. change actually, yeah. Cause yeah. typically for me at least, it's me, you know, running down right. School yeah. Street, yeah. 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 or right. South Street chasing the parade. Be like, I gotta find my kid before they stop Right, marching. right, so, so yeah, we're hoping with great. that it, it will ease um, ease some uh, worries for parents who might be watching the parade while their kids are marching in the parade. Awesome. And uh, do you need volunteers for all of this? Oh, still? we can always use volunteers. What, what kind of volunteers do you need and how do they? So one there? of the big things that we have, uh, we call them line marshals. And line marshals, we divide the parade up in four sections. So we have division one through four. So our line marshals will lead a division and we normally put two per division so that they can line up the, the participants in order of how we've lined up the parade. So everything stays consistent. And those line marshals would continue through the parade route. It's about a, maybe a mile and a half when all is said and done all the way around. Okay. Uh, they'll walk with the, their divisions and make sure everything stays in line, that there are no big gaps in the parade. That's one of the things that, that we are working on, getting enough volunteers to keep the gaps minim, minimal yeah, as, as the parade's going through. I don't think I've ever noticed line marshals before, so yeah, they so do a they'll great be, job blending in. <laughs> they'll be yellow shirts, so anybody okay, who comes yeah. out to the parade, if they need any help or, or on where to go, or look even to the field, shirt, yeah. look for a yellow shirt, whether it's one of these polo types or the volunteer t-shirts that we have for our line marshals, find a yellow shirt and they'll, they'll be able to direct. That's great. Then a lot of those parade marshals turn into field marshals. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're always yeah. looking for additional people and more just to walk around the field, make sure everyone's enjoying themselves, if anyone needs help. And then we look for volunteers on Sunday because even though the fireworks end Saturday night, there's still a massive field to be cleaned up. Yeah. So I think a lot of people just, you know, if they I get up Sunday morning and just rest, well, yeah. a lot of us are back up there making sure the fields are clean and safe because the Little League starts playing shortly after so there's a lot of trash and debris that we have to pick up and make it safe and and do you feel like this is a thankless job or do you get accolades and and, and do you, do people appreciate how much work goes into i think the appreciation is when you see all the kids faces um, the smiles and you'll see a lot of uh, kids that you coached in different games come up to you and recognize you and remember that you know you helped them when they were young mm -hmm. and just seeing like i'll see my son who's now 40 see some of his old classmates that he hasn't seen in years. So just, you know, the camaraderie that rekindles from all that is kind of the satisfaction. Yeah, well, so you talked a little bit about, you know, he's been going to this parade probably for, for years. And, and Rita, I would love to ask you a little bit about the history of the parade and, and your tenure, because I, I know that, that you have quite a mark. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I've been there, I've had, been on the committee for 33 years. And she's only didn't 34 now. Wow. Yeah, look at that. didn't she realize it, but um, when Kyle Kutch first started it, Kyle Kutch is the one that first started it, and then my sister and I joined it a couple of years after, and um, 
It's been, a, I, I was treasurer at one point, but thought yeah. that it was time for somebody younger to take it over. And, you know, I enjoy doing that. I don't usually um, at, at the field at the, at our, what, the raffle, the raffle tickets. tickets oh, yeah. and selling raffle tickets so we should come say hi to you at the, at the huh? raff, we should come say hi to you at the raffle table yeah then? Yeah. yeah say we yeah. saw you on tv yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 she'll be there selling raffles for al hofford um celtics jersey a mac jones signed helmet a pizza oven and probably over a dozen local merchants uh donation cards anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars will be out wow. for display yeah. and for raffle and how much are the raffle tickets are they they're mm -hmm. usually a dollar a piece um, but the specialty items are five dollars. Okay, yeah, that's great. And how has Founders Day changed from the beginning to what it is now? Because I feel like now it is a huge event that most of the town attends, and at least from my perspective, it feels like the whole town shuts down for the day, and we all come together on this day. What what is it? Was it always that big? It was always always the uh, everybody always came, and like like he said. You, you met a lot of people you don't see because they know that the class reunion tent is there mm -hmm. and so they all join to the field and it's great to see a lot of people that you haven't seen in a while. That's really great. It brings, it brings a lot of people that, you know, this is the day. Yeah, this is the day. Mark it on your calendar, right? Yeah. Is it the first Saturday in June every yeah. year? Yes. Second. Oh, second, second. Second Saturday. Second Saturday. Thank you. I'm, I'm, my calendar's <laughs> off. My internal calendar. Second Saturday in June every year. Mm -hmm. Great, mark, mark it down. Um, while we were just talking about the parade too, what, I wonder what the best vantage points are. are there is there a corner we should try to get to, or do you notice if that? If you can open up these windows right here, people right can see it. Probably the best, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I hope it's like like this next Saturday. Yeah, that would be great. Let's hope. Yeah. Yes, I never watch the weather. I never watch the weather until two days before, and even then, it yeah. changes too much. It changes right? way yeah. too much. Yeah. <laughs> So anywhere along the parade route is yeah. good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah there really, yeah, really is. There's a lot of good places. Absolutely. Yeah. Find some friends and, and grab, a, right. grab a chair and, mm -hmm. and enjoy. Yeah. And how, how is the town involved in the parade? How, how do they contribute? So, They're the silent partner right. behind this. Without them, Absolutely. this parade wouldn't happen. The police, in terms of management or management financial? And, in their cooperate, I mean the police department, what they do for blocking the roads, directing traffic, mm -hmm. the fire department supporting with vehicles and they do the uh, fireman's burn, um, mm -hmm. the DPW, they bring all the barricades out and cones and set that up in the tree and park, cut the field and take the trash away and there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes that people really don't realize without the town support, this wouldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Right. And, and the, the flags, department. they put the flags up oh, sure, on, yeah. the, on the posts yeah. and everything. Looks so, it always looks I mean, beautiful. Ev this everybody contributes. Great. Awesome. There are other towns to get involved too, right? I know there are fire trucks from other towns. Yes. What? So this Founders Day started as the Fireman's Field Day. So mm -hmm. the, the fire department lets other departments in the area know. We've had uh, departments as far as from the Cape mm -hmm. come to be a part of this parade. Wow. So they they take care of of putting out the word and whoever's able to make it, they'll, they will come and line up. The Sheriff's Department is also coming this year with their vehicle. So th we do open it up and other police departments, uh, Foxborough Police Department does a really good job and a lot of their officers do participate in the parade, which is really nice. So so we kick it off with the the police officers who are on motorcycles. And it, it's just a lot of fun and so much involvement. And as Rita said, it brings not just our town together, but other towns as well. I know I have friends who live, who grew up in Foxborough, but moved away. They come back for the day. It's just, it's a good feeling day. I, I love participating in it because of it. Absolutely. And you guys are a little less than two weeks out right now. So you <laughs> must be- Crunch time. Yeah. Crunch yes. time. Yes. <laughs> production week of the big mm. show that only happens once so you guys are I'm sure getting all your ducks in the line it must be it must be a hectic uh, few weeks so I say I say it's like planning a wedding you spend all this time planning a wedding and then at the end you're like okay it's over now what but then we do it every year yeah, yeah. So. 
<laughs> plan a wedding again next year. Do you ever get a chance during the day to just sit back, have a strawberry shortcake <laughs> and relax or yeah, no? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> we get in the strawberry shortcake, but as far as relaxing, that's another thing. <laughs> I know, we definitely... We have a lot of hats. Right, yeah. wear a lot of hats and volunteers are key. So the more volunteers we have, the easier it is during the day um, to, to take a break. And, and we do a good job of covering each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because nobody, it's, it's a group, right? It's mm -hmm. a small group. We're mm -hmm. a mighty group, but it's a small group. Yeah. So we take care of each other, make sure that everyone's well hydrated and taking a break when they need to. And you're all volunteers, right? You're not, yeah. you're not yeah, making no. tons of money on this yeah. event. No, you're, no, yeah. no one, everybody is a volunteer. Nobody gets paid. All you get is a yellow shirt. <laughs> That's yeah. it. The yellow shirt. And, and the look on the case faces, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Awesome. Can, so like we said, you do need volunteers mm -hmm. to make this happen. You need funds to make this happen, right? Mm -hmm. There are, how, what, how do we donate? How does, how do people in the town who have the ability to support this project support it? There's a, a website we have, so it's Foxborough Founders Day 2023. So there's places there you can get out the forms or just, I think there's actually a, a little place for donations. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Facebook page, um, so people can just reach out that way or donate that day. Um, if they hadn't donated during the boot drive, which quite a few people from mm -hmm. town come through and we did a pretty good job this year, so. How's the thermometer? So, it's getting up there. It's, it's getting about up there. Uh, 75, yeah. maybe 80 percent towards the goal. Yeah, so. and we also send out merchant letters yeah. just to, to remind them, you yeah. know, if they like to contribute or whatever. And, and we, we the boot drive. Yes, the boot yeah. drive and the was rockets. very successful. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. About the firework, I guess. Yeah. And they, our supporters have been so generous this year. We couldn't thank them enough. We wouldn't be able to pull this off without them. So uh, kudos to them if it, for everybody who's been able to contribute and, mm -hmm. and make a donation to, to Foxborough Founders Day. It's, it's, we couldn't do it without our supporters. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you <laughs> to everybody yeah. who got the word out for Founders Day. And um, thank you to FCA for, for doing this show and for inviting us back. To, to talk about it. And we usually do live coverage day of as well. So yes, I am very that. excited about yeah. that. We we have um, our commentators back this year. Very excited to, to hear them. They're they're the great duo. Um, are we allowed to say who it is? Uh, are you? Are we? Uh, let's break some news. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Kevin and Netta Penders. So we cannot wait to have them back. Yeah. Uh, we can. I confirmed yesterday, and they're a go for next weekend. And then who's ever seeing the doll carriage? Um, Sarah Ladani, I heard, is going to um, help with the doll carriage parade. So mm -hmm. the doll carriage parade. We didn't get a chance to talk about it, but we. Yeah, should. I, was, I was just yeah, saying. Yeah. A... So we do have a, a doll carriage parade every year. It's for the littles to to decorate their vehicles, mm -hmm. whether it's a wagon or a stroller or a bike. Come march in our mini parade just for you. So mm -hmm. she is, is coming back. I think she was here last year as well. So we're looking forward to that as well. And you don't need to pre-register for that. You just, you come. I, there is information on our website. So but it's such a, a like a cute event. The kids are it always is. so yeah. proud of it their is. you yeah. know wagons and and there's a winner crown typically. I think. It's yeah. different categories. Different so categories and they get they get awards. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all for fun though. Yeah. It it's really is. It's yeah. great and we spread it out. So we were doing the dog carriage parade in the morning right before the our parade kicked off and then we realized it was a little crazy with parents who want to who want to participate in both. Yeah. So the dog carriage parade is going to take place during the day on um, at the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. So at the booth field at the booth field. Courts. Yes. Great. So it'll be after the parade is over, which is good. So those parents who want to do both can participate in both. Fantastic. And this year too, we're trying to accommodate. We've never had a drop-off zone in the booth uh, parking lot because it's very cramped. We are going to accommodate a drop-off zone for the doll carriage parade and for there's going to be a roller hockey tournament later in the afternoon. So we're going to accommodate some drop-offs. So parking is kind of limited all around. So yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, there's plenty of parking uptown, <laughs> yes. maybe, if you get here early. Yep. Um, you can park at the high school. Um, we do are going to have some shuttles. There and go. there'll the be shuttles. Uh, shuttle stops oh, listed in the yeah. upcoming oh, paper and on the website. We haven't really determined all the drop-off and pickup. 
usually one's at the Booth Playground, one's at the high school, one might be down at the railroad um, where Schneider Electric is. Great. So and there might be a couple others, but those locations are still being worked on and will be in the paper. So people can park there, get the shuttle, come down to the field, get, and get the shuttle back. Fantastic. Um, yeah. so that's great. So that hopefully will work yeah, out. Mm -hmm. Improving every year. So yeah, I just want to mention one yes, thing. Uh, when I was little, I, I also was in the doll carriage parade and I won a blue ribbon. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Rita! Yeah. We're going to put a picture of that up <laughs> if you don't mind sending it in. If you want, we can start a seniors uh, section for the doll carriage. <laughs> That'd be great, yeah. <laughs> so that'd, fun. That'd be perfect. Um, any do's and don'ts for the day? Like, you shouldn't um, try to park. Yeah, in, you, in you won't get any room. parking down at the booth. Okay. Um, and they're very almost no parking at the IGO. So you're going to be parking a bit away. So as you're walking there, you know, just be aware of the traffic and use the crosswalks. And mm -hmm. a lot of people out that day, and a lot of people have to get places in a hurry. Right. So watch out for the cars. Um, is there some, disability parking available? There's some handicapped parking at the IGO, and there's some down at the booth. And we try to get or put up signs and square away two or yeah. three more. Um, but there's some up the high school, so it's difficult to accommodate all. Yes. Um, so those are, you know, the do's, be careful, be safe. The don'ts, we do try to uh, abide by the town policies for the field, so there is no smoking, no alcohol in the field. Yep. There's no pets on the field. Um, so if people are coming, please be aware, you know, dogs, it's really a town policy, so we try to abide by it. Yep, leave them at home for the day. Um, do, do keep hydrated. Many areas have water Gatorade, so you can you know, help those organizations by getting the, mm -hmm. the water. Wear sunscreen. Um, some of the days have really been hot and sunny, so yeah. that sun is beating down on you because there's very little shade out on the booth field. Right. Um, and after the fireworks, it is pretty dark, so when you're leaving, just remember, there are people driving on the streets. Stay on the sidewalks if you can. Um, the town department is trying to put up some extra lighting, extra lighting mm -hmm. so that'll help. Um, but it's really like temp temporary lighting. Temporary lighting. Yeah. Oh wow! So That's just great. the big thing is be safe. Yes. Yeah. Watch out for your kids and keep them safe. Absolutely. Yeah. And parking changes a little bit for the fireworks, right? Mm -hmm. Some of those areas open up or no? They, no. they usually oh. kind of consume. I mean, <laughs> the Booth Playground only has about 90 parking spots. Right. So they're pretty much gone. And so. I go as, as well. As but people will park at the high school and sit in the fields out over there. The right. only thing they can't sit on is the uh, football field. Um, the because trail. the truck. Because there's no food or drink out on the food, so on the field. So we try to keep that. Yeah, keep that nice. And yeah. we just installed that. We want to, you know. Yep. Keep it pristine for years. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, I did have a question about uh, the field. Or is the fire department doing their, their burn again? The fire department is doing their burn. That will be going on at the same time as the doll carriage. So the doll carriage is a younger group, and the fire burn is kind of an older, so that will be going on. And then right after the fire burn, we'll have a DJ coming on, uh, DJ Paul from Gem City Music. He'll be playing from 1 to 2.30. Great. And then a second band, the Meyer Satin Band, will be playing from 5.30 to 8.45 just before time for the fireworks. Awesome, oh, that's great. A, f a whole full day. It's it is oh, a yeah. full day, yeah. Full yes. Day. Yeah. And the roller hockey tournament will be going on from three to whenever the teams finish. With, with the DJ in the background. Is what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or in between. Or in between, okay, mm -hmm. great, perfect. Um, that fire department burn, I remember one year, uh, it was, I don't wanna say traumatized, that's too strong of a word, but, but they did, they had one uh, house Full of like you know modern flame resistant yeah. materials and another of, of you know older materials and it went up so fast. Did they always explain it like that? Or? That's how they've always done it. The last yeah. year they only did a single room so. and I think this year they were only doing a single. But I think yeah. they'll have different age furniture and stuff to show how the new stuff just and the older stuff takes its time to catch on fire and burn. So they give usually, you a chance to escape. Yeah. And then yeah. what to do when a fire does start and the smoke alarms go off. So they, they walk everyone who's there at the field to learn um, what goes on during a fire. Oh, it's a huge learning experience it uh, is. For, for me with young kids, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. So thanks for that. Um, for the field volunteers, you said a lot of them will be parade volunteers that But we do need... You need some more. More down there while the parade's going on, more to help the people get on the field, make sure they get set up, and then we try to get all the vehicles off the field. It's very 
difficult to keep everyone safe because there's only one egress and it's one lane street. So we have to coordinate with walkie talkies that FCA donates for usage. Cool. And we have to coordinate getting the cars down Hobie Boulevard and cars getting back up and stopping traffic on Sol Street to let that all happen. So that's one of the big events in the morning for the volunteers to do. Awesome. And uh, there's also need for Friday set up, correct? Yes. Yep. <laughs> so yep. Friday morning, uh, we generally start around eight, eight, right? Eight o'clock, we meet at Booth. Well, there's a crew that goes out earlier mm -hmm. and they get all the equipment that's needed from the from our storage unit. Mm -hmm. They'll bring it back to, to the Booth fields. We start setting up tents. We put up snow fencing for fireworks. We are lining the field this year mm -hmm. for Couch at Bingo. It's coming back. Oh yeah, we I, yeah. I have that. I want to talk mm -hmm. more about that. Yeah. So we need volunteers to help with the the lining up the the stakes when we put up our tents. Um, we have to get all the barrels out for trash. Get them. Get trash bags in them. So to get and it all. Even if I know prepared. nothing about Founders Day, mm -hmm. I, I I'll show up and you'll say, Yep, absolutely. Go do this. Go do we'll this. We'll have an assignment for you to absolutely pair up with someone and go off and do it. Perfect. And the more hands we have, yep. the many quicker, hands many make, make quick yeah, work. That's what make they say. Work, yeah. Awesome. Um, any other volunteer needs that that we didn't? Oh, clean up. We mentioned anything else. We're always looking for new volunteers to be involved on the committee year round. Okay. So Correct. if anyone's interested, you know, we do meet the first Tuesday of every month. And then once it gets closer, like May 1st, we meet once a week until so, the yeah. event. We're in crunch time yeah. now. Yes, we are. We'll, yes, we we'll are. We'll see you there. All right. So looking for, for more volunteers on the committee itself, mm -hmm. too. And right. would you get your name on that? Sure yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. I'm trying to trying to give them an incentive at home. And right? they're bright and yellow, so yeah, you can't really miss them. Yeah. <laughs> they really you stand out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, we wanted to talk about the couch at Bingo. Did you say you have sheep too now, or is that well, uh, different? They're, they're just going to bring for like a little petting zoo for the, oh, for the nice. kids. So with uh, the llamas or separate from the llamas? Separate. Great. Uh, the Different llamas things. coming from one farm, and the cows coming from being donated by uh, oak. Oak Farm Oak used Noel. to be Oak Knoll. Yeah. Um, so they're doing that, and uh, so we'll have a grid all set up. Um, you can buy a square. Um, I think it'll be ten dollars for a square, and we'll have the cow once either the squares are full or a predetermined time, which will probably be like two o'clock. We'll release the cow out to the field, and <laughs> when the cow does its business, wherever <laughs> it ends up, that's how the win is determined. Or we'll have a judge to determine if. No one bought that square at the closest to. Gotcha. So and someone will definitely win. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Even if it's an empty square. And we yeah. are doing something different with Couch at Bingo. We are not pre-selling tickets. Mm -hmm. They will only be sold that day. Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure that the word gets out okay. whether whether we do it by a handout or at the raffle tent. Mm -hmm. We'll let them know Couch at Bingo is happening behind us. Great, great. So make sure you bring bring cash. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else that, that we need to cover? Sure, at the field too, we're gonna have a lot of kids games. We have a jousting um, inflatable coming Ooh. from one of the churches, a bungee run, um, an inflatable ring toss. There's gonna be lots of raffles going on. The baseball always has an enormous amount of baskets they raffle off. Mm -hmm. um, the iMobile, as mentioned, will be there. Um, there's gonna be antique tractors around so people can Talk to the people that own them and find out about it. There's be a place for temporary tattoos. A lot of information give outs from the health department and the veterans um, department. And there will be a video running from the historical society on all the historical homes in town. Awesome. There's a lot. It's a great day. And one thing that will be in the parade, which is also being uh, by the cultural society, is Fox in the Woods. A fox in the burrow. Fox, yes. yeah. So one yeah. of those foxes will be down on the field for viewing and take a selfie with. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. All right. Well, I want to thank all three of you. Is there anything else that we missed before we, we wrap up? This has been so much information. It's been fun. Everyone's looking anything at Rita. Rita. I know, Rita. <laughs> what did you else? need to say that you didn't get no, the chance to? You're going to no, say, be sure you come out Saturday the 10th. Yeah, and if anybody needs any information, just come to our booth and... 
that's another way that they can know what to do. Perfect. Saturday, <laughs> Absolutely. June 10th, June 10th. 9.30, people, the roads start closing down. Yep. So, so get in place before then. Mm -hmm. And they'll yep. open up around 11.30, if anybody is wondering. Normally about 11.30, the roads are starting to open up. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you so much, thank and you. Monica, Rita, and Carrie for coming down and, and sharing all of your Founders Day knowledge with us today. Um, it's been, it's just been an absolute blast to talk to you and I can't <laughs> wait to, uh, to see you on the day. I'll be sure to say hi. Make sure you, you come out and say hi to these three if you see them out there in their yellow shirts and, and thank uh, all the volunteers. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm Jared Craig. I've been your host for Around Foxborough this week. I look forward to seeing you out at Founders Day. And I just want to thank the people at FCA TV who helped make this happen. Uh, Lauren Batar, Paul Beck, Michael Weber, and Fanny Miserambe. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.